Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now's a great time to grab your pens and weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already, because the service starts in 90 seconds. to see you today. I'm looking forward to today's impact and service. During the service, you may have some questions, comments, prayer requests. Go to churchexperience.tv backslash connect or pull out your camera app and scan the QR code to connect with us. Or you can even hit that subscribe button if you always want to know what's going on here at CE. We are always glad to hear from you, get back to you, and be praying for you. Guess what time it is? Time to spend time worshiping God through songs. Let's jump in, participate, and let God speak to us during this time. My weakness is hidden within your glory. Jesus, my strength is in you. The odds are against me, but you are for me. Jesus, my strength is in you.
change to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me
promise stands, God. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. God, we've seen you move. We know that you're not just a God of then, but you are a God of right now. We know that you are in our situations. You're in our current moments when we feel like 
we can't get a breath in. God, we know that you're there. We know that you move. So God, whatever it is that we're going through, you know. And we just pray that you will move. You will move those mountains. We know that you're a God who is faithful to his word. We thank you for that. God, move. Move in our lives. Move in our hearts. Change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Can we give God a big hand clap of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do we have any first time guests with us in the building? Your first time guests. Let's make see, let's make some noise for all of our first time guests. We're so excited about having you worship with us on this morning. We're so excited about what God is doing here. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. We're going to begin reading at verse 17. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. And can we stand for the reading of the word on today? I feel a little different on today. I'm going to stand for the reading. Why do we stand for the reading of the word? Because we want the word to stand for us. Amen. Hallelujah. And it reads, it says, Then I said to them, You can see the trouble we have here Jerusalem is a pile of ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. I'll say that one more, one more time. Come, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Then we will not be ashamed anymore. Look at your neighbor and say, I won't be ashamed. Come on, look at you looked at the wrong neighbor. Say, I won't be ashamed anymore. <laughs> verse, verse 18 reads, I says, I also told them that my God had been kind to me. I told them what the king had said to me. Then they answered, let's start to work now. So we began this good work, but San Balak, from Haran, Tobiah, the Ammonite official, and Geshem, the Arab, heard that we were building again. They made fun of us in a very ugly way. They said, what are you doing? Are you turning against the king? But this is what I said to them. The God of heaven will help us succeed. We are God's servants and we will rebuild this city. You cannot help us in this work because none of your family lives here in Jerusalem. You don't own any land here and you have no right to be in this place. You may be seated. The title of today's message is, I'm a city shaker. I'm a city shaker. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a city shaker. Come on, look behind you and say, I'm a city shaker. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke 10 and 2, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And it says, goes on to say, pray that the Lord of the harvest send forth laborers out into the vineyard. The, har the, the, the harvest is great. The need is great. And we are, the laborers may be few in number, but the laborers aren't just few, the laborers are you. Everybody say, I'm a laborer. We have to realize that we are an atmosphere, we, we set the atmosphere wherever we are. The Bible says life and death lies from the power of your tongue. So when you speak, your, your miracle is in your mouth. Victory is released out of your voice. Just turn to your neighbor and say, watch what you say. Because that's going to determine what you see. That's going to determine what you see. So many times we speak, uh, uh, the Bible says blessings and curses can't flow from the same fountain. Anybody know someone who you, who, who's been around you that speaks nothing but negativity? Okay, that might just be me. It seems like someone has nothing good to say. It, it might be a sunny day. It might be beautiful outside. And they end up saying, it's just way too hot outside. It, it might be cloudy. Why is the clouds in the sky? It might be stormy. And it's like, man, they find something negative to say at, at, at any given situation. Anybody know somebody like that? Okay. What we say will determine what we see. So we need to learn how to speak the word of God when it comes down to our region and even when it comes down to our families and when it comes down to our city. Everybody say Butler is about to change. Come on, I, I wish I had some people from CE that would declare out of your mouth, my city is about to change. It's about to change. The whole narrative about this city is getting ready to change. Why? Because God has placed city shakers here. God has placed city shakers here. You're not here by coincidence. You're not here by happenstance. But you are here. I'm already preaching. By God ordained appointment to be able to make a, a difference in this city. Hope is being released to this city. Joy, joy is being released to this city. Restoration is being released to this city. And I'll say this right here. Fresh Vision is being released to this city. Fresh vision. The Bible says where there is a lack of vision, the people cast off restraint. Lack of vision. But God is raising up a church. When God wants to change a city, he raises up a church. He raises up an army of believers that will step into the enemy's camp and take back everything that the enemy saw. It says, you can't have my family. You can't have my school. You can't have this area. You can't have my city. We must be willing, preaching too fast, we must be willing, I'm just excited this morning, we must be willing to be bold. Two spirits that every visionary will have to overcome. Everybody shout, what are they? I'm glad you asked. Is the spirit of discouragement and the spirit of distraction. The spirit of discouragement and the spirit of distraction. 
be honest, Pastor. Is it all right if I keep it hot with y'all? What does hot mean? Keep it honest, open, and transparent. This year has been one of the toughest times of my life. It has. But we must learn. Come on here. I got time to tell you the story later. Um, we got t- we have to learn how to build in spite of. Despite it, we must learn how to press beyond our feelings and step into our faith and realize that the same God that brought you through last year, come on, is the same God that will bring you through right this very moment. Discouragement. That's what that spirit of Sanballat and Tobiah represent. It's that negative spirit. It says you can't do this. You won't overcome. You won't make it. Come on here. It's what the enemy constantly throws. It's a it's a, a dark report. It's an evil report. But you have to learn in this season. You have to be bold in spite of what how you may feel. You got to learn how to preach in spite of. You got to learn how to pray in spite of. You got to learn how to encourage in spite of. You got to learn how to serve in spite of. Because what you're doing and what you're building matters. What you're building matters. One of the things that the enemy wants to do is say, what you're building is not important. Nehemiah, man of God, said, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand boldly. I'm not going to be bitter. I know this is not the perfect situation. But I must build. I don't know if I named the title of it, but that's the title of today's message. I must build. Many times we love the buying process, but we don't like the building process. We want everything to be perfect. We want all, we want everything to be in place. But God is raising up builders who are willing to work and willing to serve in spite of, everybody say, I must serve. It was amazing. Um, Our worship leader said, God raise up servants. How many heard when she said that? She said, God, raise up servants in this place. God, raise up people who are willing to serve. When she said, I almost ran up to her and, and hugged her and gave her a high five right there. I said, you, yeah, I said, yes, you're in, the, you're in the Holy Spirit, woman of God. You're in the Holy Ghost. I said, yes, God is raising up uh, servants uh, to be able to make a difference. Many times we get too wrapped uh, in our past, we get too wrapped in our shortcomings, we get too wrapped in, in, in difficulty that we stop serving. You matter. You matter. Look at your neighbor and say, you matter. Come on, look at another neighbor and say, you matter. Yes, you might be country, you, you're, you're peculiar, you might be country, you might be funny. Yeah, yes, God wants to use, yes, your unique self. God wants to use your unique contribution to this assignment. Yes, God is raising up city shakers. Anybody got a testimony? Anybody got a story? One of these days, one, one service, we're going to have a testimony service. One, one, one day, one day, one day, one day. Not today per se, but hallelujah, but one day. Anybody got an ugly testimony? Anybody got an ugly story? Ooh. God wants to use people who have ugly stories. <laughs> Anybody ever made some mistakes before? <laughs> Some of you said, I I made a a few mistakes before I came in the room today. (laughs) God wants to use your story for his glory. Woo! (laughs) That's why Sam Ballot 
wants to step in on the scene to try to bring this discouragement. Wow. Rebuild the wall. How many have seen some things that need, that need, how many seen some areas in Butler that need some significant attention to? Whew. Everybody will say, yes, but there's some areas in this area, in this city, in this region that need specific attention to. The next question is, what are you going to do about it? Are we just talking about it? Or are you willing to pick up a hammer? Are you willing to build? Are you willing to construct? Are you willing to follow the blueprint of heaven? Are you willing to follow the instructions to build? Everybody say, I must build. I was looking for a construction jacket. I looked everywhere to try to find one. I was looking for some construction. I was looking for a construction jacket. I was looking for some goggles. I was looking for a cone. I was going to have a hammer up here. I, could, I didn't have time. I was looking for I was. I said, man, God wants to raise up builders in this place. God wants to raise up builders. I must build. I must build. God was just... Sharing, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. He says, I'm giving abundance for every good work. If I say every good work. Some people have a desire and a vision to help kids. Over these past couple of weeks, I've been sharing with some of our Bible study team, some of our um, student experience team, I said, Lord, raise up young people in this city. God, give us a strategy to be able to reach. I was talking to you, Pastor Josh. I said, give us a strategy to reach youth. Give us a strategy to reach children in this area. God, we want to see a revival take place with um, youth and children. How many want you want to see your, your kids on fire for God, your nieces, your nephews on fire for God? If you believe that, give God praise right there. I said, we got a lot of, I said, I said, Lord, we have a lot of programs at this church. We have a lot of things. I said, but I want to see hundreds of young people on fire for God. Ooh, I said, I want to see, how many want to see young leaders rise up? Come on here. I want to see, like, good man, young people like Noah, Samuel, declare the word of God. <laughs> It's one thing if I declare the word of God with fire, you might, you might respond, but just imagine, young man right here in the way church, just stand up real quick, you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, either one of y'all, come on. Just imagine, just imagine him opening up the service and praying until fire came in. How many want to see it? Okay, oh, oh my, you can be seated. <laughs> God wants to do something. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, yeah Noah. <laughs> I love his name, too. His name is Noah. God wants to do something through all age groups. Come on here. God wants to use the, the Bible says he calls the season, the older ones, because they know the way, they, because they have wisdom. And the Bible says he calls the young because they are strong. Everybody say, put the young people to work. <laughs> yeah, it's time to put, put the young people to work. They got a little bit more energy. Come on here. They got a little bit more stamina, and we can just be able to guide and clap them uh, as, they, as they complete assignments. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for that. Come on, God is raising up builders. God is raising up people that are passionate, passionate, want to work, want to build it. Anybody, you can tell, I love looking, looking around the room, you can tell that someone is not passionate about something. 
Anybody ever been around and you had to be on a team with somebody who really doesn't want to be there? Okay, it got quiet in the room. I didn't say look at your neighbor right there. I said, anybody ever been, been on a team where you, you were with somebody, they really don't, didn't want to be there. You had to beg them to come. You had to beg them to, to, to show up. You had to beg them to serve. God's raising up people, women of God, who are willing to serve, who are willing to work, that you don't have to beg, that you don't have to plead, that you don't have to have a, we don't have to have a, a whole cheerleading squad to be able to encourage them to, to serve. Everybody say, I must serve. Why, I'm glad you asked, because it's necessary. I did. I was driving around Butler this morning. I said, Lord, give us a city. Give, give us a city. Give us a city. Give us a city. I was just praying over some different neighborhoods. I was in the island a little bit, driving around. Give us the city. Shake this, shake this region. Shake the island, God. Shake this, shake this territory. Shake Lindor. Shake Meridian. Shake the surrounding areas. Give us the city. Give me an anointing to shake the city. Woo! God's raising us up for, for such a time as this. For such a for such a time as this. So Nehemiah is building. Here comes that spirit again. He sees the holes. He sees the breaks. He sees the gaps in the gate. Here comes that spirit again. He's at a high place. He's at an elevated place. God has raised him up for such a time as this. <laughs> Spiritually and, and naturally. He's raised him up. Here comes that spirit again. Anybody ever had to deal with distraction before? As soon as you start praying, you, you, got, you start getting sleepy. You, you start getting in your word and Next thing you know, you start yawning harder than you ever yawned before. I, I don't know if that's just, is that just me in the room? Come on here. You, you start, you start, you get into your word, and the next thing you know, you're just like, ooh, where did that, you, you haven't been tired all day. You're just waking up, and then next thing you know, you started yawning. That's that spirit of distraction. And we must be intentional about our pursuit of our God-given uh, assignments. In this season, we have to be laser-focused. Everybody shout laser-focused. I'm almost reminded of like a, like a laser beam. I wish I had one of those pinpointing things. Almost like a, a laser beam. It's so precise. It's so accurate. And anything that is taking you away from your God-given assignment, you got to let it go. Okay, it's, it got quiet in the room that fast. You got to let it go. You have to learn how to shake off any distraction that's pulling you from a move of God. C.E., I feel momentum rising. God is about to send revival to our church. God is about to send revival to our city. Everybody shout revival. I didn't say survival. I said revival. That means expansion, passion, fresh passion, fresh life is about to be blown into our city. Our city is not about to go under. Who? Fresh life. Butler will not be a city of dry bones. Woo, I'll say that again. Butler will not be a city of dry bones. But there's about to be uh, wells of revival. There's about to be rivers that are about to spring forth from desert places. Woo. So, Nehemiah built, stood firm, on the word of God. Some of you have felt like this past year, you got attacked in every area of your life. And you were like, why? 
Anybody ask, have, has, has anybody ever had to ask why? Why am I going through this right now? Why not you? God is putting weight behind your words. Your words are about to carry away. What you've been through might have crushed your heart. Anybody ever been through any heartbreaks before? I'm talking about a real heartbreaks. Anybody experienced heartbreak, heartache, discomfort? That is the time. Now, if y'all don't take anything else from this message, that's the time where you lean and trust to God the most. That's the time where you serve God the most. That's not the time where you quit up. That's not the time where you pack your bags up and say, I'm gone. Whew. That's the time where you say, I'm going to keep on building. And the same God that brought you out before is the same God that's going to help you right now. It's always darkest before the new day. Some of you are in one of the darkest seasons of your life right now. Weeping may endure for the night. Oh, my. But joy comes in the morning. Everybody say, joy is coming. Come on, you didn't, you didn't get excited about it. Say, joy is coming. That is a promise. Joy is coming. God is shifting your grief to glory. He's shifting your gloom to glory. He's, making, he's shifting your bitterness to making you better. There's a shift that's getting ready to take place in your life. How many ready for the shift that's getting ready to take place? Get in posture, get in position, and watch what God begins to do. Watch, watch God work, watch God move. Oh my God, I got to talk about this today. Come on, say, take your time, Pastor. <laughs> take your time. <laughs> Some of y'all like, hurry up, Pastor, hurry up, hurry up. That's all right. <laughs> Some of y'all like, I got a, I got a game to watch. I got a meal to, meal to eat. Y'all, y'all, y'all can wait five more minutes. Glory to God. Anybody ever had to deal with any doubters? Any doubters? Anybody ever had to deal with any naysayers? <laughs> Anybody ever had to deal with any haters? Anybody ever had to deal with any opposition? Woo! Some of y'all say, I had to deal with that all this week. God's getting ready to move on your behalf. God says, I'm getting ready to prove all doubters wrong. As long as you don't doubt. <laughs> no doubt. You must be full of faith. Everybody say, I'm full of faith. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith, when you have faith, that means God is getting ready to step on the scene and move on your behalf. There's a, a divine enablement, enablement, there's divine assistance that is connected when you operate in your faith. You move out of ordinary and you shift into the extraordinary. You move out of the natural and you shift to the supernatural. You don't become just average. You become above average. That's why the enemy wants to attack your faith with fear, distractions, and discouragement. If God be for you, I got a few preachers that are helping me out in the room. If God be for you, who can be? He's more than the whole world against you. Some of you have felt like your whole world was against you. Worship team, y'all can come on, come on. Hallelujah. If you can feel, some of you have felt like you had uh, so many obstacles uh, against you. Whew. 
this is a word of encouragement. God's got your back. Woo! You don't look like what you've been through. Some of you have survived attacks, assassinations, accusations, addictions, shortcomings, abuse. What have you survived? I can't tell you a story better than you can. Let's stand. You're not going to break down. You're going to be old. You're not, this is not your breakdown season. Your family is not going to break down. No, your family is not going to break down. Your family is going to grow. Our church is not going to break down. <laughs> Our church is going to grow. Our city is not going to break down. Our city is going to expand. Shake off that spirit of that battle. Shake off that enemy. Whatever it is you may be facing, give it to God on today. Lift your hands. You can. Lift your hands. Lifted hands is a sign of surrender. <laughs> Lifted hand says, I know you're in the fire. I know you love me. <laughs> Come on. Just begin to worship God in your own way for about 30 seconds. Just begin to love on your father right there. Right there. You just begin to just pour your love out to God right there. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right there, right there. What did you come in here needing help with? What did you need coming here needing assistance with? Whew. He's near to the broken spirit. He's seeing about that concern right now. God says he sees, he knows, and he cares. someone on a day that want to rededicate their life to the Lord on today. If that's you, you can shoot your hand in the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's one. That's two. Three. Four. You're not going to burn out. <laughs> some, some people really feel tired. They really, really feel like giving up and saying, man, I've see some of your faces, you're like, man, I'm tired, Pastor. Re re receive fresh strength. Even now. Ooh, even. Uh -huh. God says, I love you so much. I love you. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what mistake you've made. I wish I could sing that like Lindsay. <laughs> it doesn't matter what mistake you've made. <laughs> I wish I could hum it. Give it to God and watch by this time next year. Mark your date on the calendar. Man. Woo. Still standing. Still stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God glory. I must be open. Come on, clap your hands. Let's give God praise right there. Let's give God a, th come on, give God praise. The devil lost again. Come on, come on, Randy. The devil lost again. He lost again. He lost again. 
He thought he was going to win, but he lost again. Lifting hands is not just a sign of surrender. I feel like I'm a little happy. Lifting hands is not just a sign of surrender. Lifting hands is a sign of victory. Come on, I wish you would just lift your hands as your sign of victory right there. Clap your hands and give God praise one more time. Before our usher team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards. Each week, our VIP greeting team creates a warm, welcome environment so each person who comes to the CE campus can encounter a love for Jesus. If you have a heart for others to experience Christ's love, then the VIP greeting team may be the team just for you. To find out more about serving in the VIP greeting team, write VIP on your response card. Represent your church this summer by sporting some CE merch. This is a great way to get a conversation started with people you encounter throughout the summer. It may even lead to an invitation to come learn more about Jesus at one of our services. Check out churchexperience.tv slash merch. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and to receive our tithes and offerings, guess what's coming up on June 11th, our Kingdom Builders Offering. This is an opportunity to give above and beyond what you regularly tithe to see great things happen in God's kingdom through CE. On June 11th, we're asking each person in our CE family to prayerfully consider giving above and beyond what they normally give and designate a special offering to the next through your campus. Your above and beyond giving to God through next will allow us to help people in need at all campuses, invest in the next generation, and start new church locations by launching new CE campuses and invest in momentum building projects. Each campus has a specific project or goal we're saving up for, so when you give to the next fund online or in the service, please designate your campus. A one-time or recurring gift designated to Next will give fuel to the vision of our church family and lead us to more life change for Christ. Thank you for being a generous, kingdom-minded church. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ. lost but he brought me in his love for me in his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free
been an amazing day with you at CE. You may have made a commitment during the service, and we'd love to have you reach out and tell us about it by scanning the QR code. If you have questions, comments, prayer requests, you can scan that same code or go to churchexperience.tv backslash connect. Hope to hear from you. If you haven't, check out our CE social media, Instagram, Facebook, website, or app. Make sure you do, or go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've loved our time together, and we can't wait to see you next week.